uh, recently. Really not looking terribly fantastic. And let's see here. Uh, Steven Adams and Tony or Terrence Ferguson, excuse me, are day to day for the Thunder. They're hopeful that both of them are going to play. As far as the Miami Heat, Derek Jones and Goran Dragic are both out. Um, I'm not sure really what to think about the Heat. Oklahoma City's a damn good team. I like Oklahoma City in this game. Oklahoma City is actually favored by four and a half on the road, and it looks like, according to ESPN, they have about a 59% chance of winning the game. Alrighty, two more games to talk about tonight. We have Salt Lake City. We're in Salt Lake City with the Utah Jazz hosting Trey Young, John Collins, and the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, this one's rough. I'm looking first things first. ESPN's Basketball Power Index says Utah has a 91% chance of winning this game. They're favored by 12 points at home. That's an impressive number right there. I will say that's a very impressive. Let me look and see what's going on with the Boston Knicks, what, the, what ESPN thinks about that. See, Boston, as a 14-point favorite, ESPN thinks they have an 81% chance to win. Utah, two less points on, on the spread, but ESPN has them at 91%, 10% more than, uh, or 10% better chance than Boston to win the game. Um, <clears throat> so, it looks like... Uh, Miles Plumlee is going to be out of the game for the Hawks, and Tyler Dorsey is day-to-day. -day. They're hoping he's going to be able to play for Utah. Raul Neto, Dabo Cephalosha, and Dante Exum all will be out of the game. Uh, Utah's been playing fantastic lately, though. I think they've won three or four straight games. Donovan Mitchell uh, back to back looking like the guy that he was last year, maybe even a little bit better, actually. Um, Rudy Gobert playing at a defensive MVP level. All right, and one last game. This is going to be the second ESPN game of the night. We are in Denver. We have the Denver Nuggets hosting the Houston Rockets. Uh, Denver's going to be a four-and-a-half point favorite. This is at 8 p.m. I don't know if I said that. Uh, Nikola Jokic, or Jokic has been getting MVP chance everywhere. He's been, uh, every time he's been on the court, at least in Denver. Uh, James Harden is averaging 36 points per game this season. Uh, <clears throat> pretty pretty damn impressive there. Chris Paul, it looks like, is day-to-day. -day. I think that he's going to play, honestly. Uh, Nene, I think, is also going to play. He is listed as day-to-day, -to -day too. So the Den uh, Denver Nuggets still going to be missing Michael Porter Jr., obviously. Uh, Jamal Murray is going to be out in this one. And then Gary Harris might also miss the game. Um. I guess that's pretty much where we're at. Yeah, it's not really giving me any information on the other guys here. Um, basically, just just you know, they're hoping they're hoping to get uh, Gary Harris back in the game. Uh, and like I said, Denver's going to be favored by four and a half at home. That should be a pretty fun game to watch. <coughs> All righty, so that's going to take us to the end of the preview. I'm now going to move into some news here. Uh, it just broke about 20 minutes ago that Kyrie Irving is really leaving it up in the air here uh, about his return <clears throat> about his return uh, to Boston. Um, I guess he was asked if his mindset has changed regarding re-signing with Boston, and he just said, ask me July 1. Um, he says he's going to do what's best for his career after that. That's big. Honestly, that looks like he's not, unless they're able to pull some shit together this season, really mature, really put, make a push uh, to go to the finals, I think there's a good chance he's not going to sign there. Um, and I, from what I talked about, I think, earlier in the week, the Celtics themselves have a growing um, concern that he's not going to be, uh, he's not going to resign there also, uh, which is another reason why he has been entrenched a little bit in trade talks, uh, which would be kind of crazy. Um, but, I mean, if he's not going to resign there, you might be able to flip him for a guy like Anthony Davis, possibly, or um, really, really tough to tell, but maybe, maybe somebody else, you know. Um, what else is the news here? Uh, the Knicks president, James Dolan, said that Porzingis did not want to be here. Apparently yesterday he demanded a trade, and it literally happened in a couple of hours. Like two or three hours later, he was gone. Um, so that's, I guess, news there. He didn't want to be in New York. I thought that just the opposite was true, actually. Uh, and then other news, we got um, LeBron James is back, like I had already talked about. He is back. He has missed over a month, uh, and he had a damn fantastic game there. 
and uh, it looks like everything seems to be healthy and working well. And uh, uh, yeah, oh, it looks like here Stephen A. Smith is claiming that the Knicks could land Kyrie Irving, and that's been what the Knicks have been looking for with these two max cap spots pretty much the whole time. They're looking to get Kyrie Irving, or this is what they've been been told at least. What they the best case scenario would be to get Kyrie and Kevin Durant as a one-two punch, and then add a third player after that. Probably not a max player, but just a good, solid player. And make a push. Uh, I mean, you know, Kyrie and Kevin Durant alone would be probably enough to make a push uh, pretty close to the finals, if not if not in the finals. All right, that's pretty much all the news here from the NBA today. Um, we're going to do power rankings here in a second. We're going to come back. Obviously, we're going to be off for the weekend. Um... And then we're going to come back on Monday. We're going to do the standings. We're going to do a, even though it's past the halfway point of the season, I'm going to do a, a halfway point um, awards, MVP, Defense Player of the Year, all that stuff. Uh, that'll be on Monday's show. Um, but now let's break down our, or my, weekly power rankings. At the 10th spot, I think they're down a couple of the spots from uh, yesterday. We have the Houston Rockets. Um, let's see. Houston is sitting at 6th place in the West with a 29 and 21 record. They have lost one game in a row. Uh, what game was that? Was the other night? I can't remember. Um, so, yeah, I have them at number 10. Uh, and like I said, kind of the same thing last week. James Harden is the best scorer in the NBA. You have him. If Chris Paul can come back and be healthy, especially defensively, that'll be a big, big addition, obviously. Kenneth Farid is playing well when you get Clint Capella back. Uh, honestly, they're probably going to be higher on my rankings again. Like I said, I had them at 8 last week. The one loss, though, um, kind of stuck out a little bit, so I have them down to thing. Number 9, we have the Utah Jazz. Uh, the Jazz are winners of, uh, no, one straight loss, but 8 and 10 in their last, or 8 and 2 in their last 10 games, and they have a 3 point, um, a positive 3 point differ differential in this one. That's actually why I have them ranked above Houston in this game. If Houston just has a plus 1.4, while Utah has that uh, that plus 3. Utah's record is 29-23. and 23. They're actually a game behind Houston. Two games in the lost column, same amount of wins. Uh, but I actually have them above them. I think they're overall a better team. Rudy Gobert, defensively, they're one of the best teams in the NBA. They have one of the best home court advantages in the NBA with the elevation in Salt Lake and it's kind of the crazy people. Uh, I like Utah a lot. I think they could really make a push this season. Number eight, we have the Portland Trailblazers. Sitting at 32-20, and 20. hard to argue against that. They're just four and a half games behind Golden State right now. Uh, winners of three straight games and seven of their last ten. They have a 3.1 uh, plus 3.1 point differential on the season, which is, uh, you know, damn good. I mean, he's one of the best in the league. Um... Damian Lillard having a career year. Nurkic probably having a career year, or pretty close to it, maybe the second best of his career. C.J. McCollum starting to pick up more as of late. Uh, I think he had a 30-point game in their last game. Um, good overall team there. Uh, depth is decent. Depth is pretty good. Uh, they're going to need to get more out of the Nick Stauskas's and, and the, you know, people like that, though, in order to, to maximize their potential and make a push for the Western Conference Finals. All right, number seven, we start to get into the Eastern teams again. we got the Boston Celtics. I think they've won nine of their last 11 games. Um, won back-to-back -back also, Kyrie or without Kyrie Irving. They're 32-19, and 19, a half game above Portland in the standings, even though they're not in the same, uh, not in the East, they're not in the West, you know, but they are a half game better. Um, and then the thing here, I mean, just obviously you have Kyrie Irving. He's one of the best players in the league. You have Jason Tatum. Uh, one of the best young players in the league. Definitely a person who can score. You've got all sorts of talent. Rogier off the bench. Marcus Smith. Jalen Brown. Uh, Al Horford. Gordon Hayward. You just have a plethora of people uh, that are going to be able to, at any given point, produce for you, get you points, uh, get you some defensive stuff and things like that. There's just a lot of options there for Boston. Um, I might even be a little bit surprised that I don't have them higher, but... Um, I was just kind of looking at the standings, and I couldn't put them above these other uh, Eastern Conference teams. 
And number six, we have the Philadelphia 76ers. Winners of back-to-back -back games, seven of their last ten games. Uh, damn, one thing I should note about the Boston Celtics, they have a plus 6.8 point differential. That's the second best in the league. The only team with a higher point differential in the league is the Milwaukee Bucks at a plus 9.7. Even Toronto is only a plus 5. So, uh, and how about Golden State? Where are they? Plus 7, actually. So, that would be... Yeah, they're, so, only Golden State and Milwaukee have a higher... or a better point differential. Um, but the Sixers, winners of back-to-back -back games. 7-3 um, and three in their last 10, like I said. They have a plus 3.7 point differential. Huge win. If, if they would have lost that game last night... I likely would have put Boston above them, but that, that was an impressive victory against Golden State last night. Uh, huge game for JoJo. Huge game for Ben Simmons. I really like these guys. Bad game for Jimmy Butler, but they were able to overcome that, and he was still able to help them propel, the, propel them uh, to a victory. Can't say enough about that team. They're really, really impressing me. Obviously, their main issue is going to be depth. They do not have a lot of players. They're going to need to get a, some scoring. They're going to need to find some scoring out of a guy like Landry Shannon. Uh, or something like that. Mike Muscala, something like that. Alright, number five. We have the loser of last night's game. Basically, number five and number four. We're going to be interchangeable here. The Toronto Raptors obviously lost last night. They've won six of their last ten. They have a plus 5.1 point differential on the season. Uh, and they're a game and a half behind Milwaukee for first place in the East. And I believe that would be the best record in the league also. Yes. Nope, they have a Actually, I guess Denver, too. Denver and Golden State both have better records. Um, so they have the fourth best record. Pretty damn good thing. Um, not much to say here. Defensively, they're fantastic. Kawhi Leonard, one of the best defensive players in the league overall. Kyle Lowry, one of the best defensive point guards. Uh, a lot of length. Pascal Siakam played fantastic. 28 points last night, if you remember. I'm not even sure. I don't think it's a career high, but it's got to be pretty damn close. Um, yeah, I love Toronto. I think there's a very high chance that we're going to see them in the NBA Finals this year. It is it is relatively open, though, with these four teams in the East, but uh, right now they're the second best in probably just about everybody's eyes. Alrighty, at number four, we have the last Eastern Conference team that we're going to have on the list, the Milwaukee Bucks. Huge win last night. What was a 15-point win uh, in Toronto? Arguably, I could have put them even higher. Um, I just... The level of competition in the, in the West is so good that I do I do have to have these other three teams above them right now. But, uh, you know, Milwaukee, what can I say? They're the best team in the Eastern Conference. They're a game and a half above uh, Toronto, four games above Philadelphia. They've won eight of their last ten games, including back-to-back. -back. Uh, I already said earlier, they have a plus 9.7 point differential. That's the best in the league by almost three points. Um, a 22-4 home record, almost impossible to beat them there. They have Giannis Antetokounmpo, who might be the best player in the league this season, and pretty self-explanatory. They're one of the best defensive teams. They're long. Um, they, they switch well. And they can get scoring from a variety of areas. Bledsoe, Chris Middleton, obviously Giannis, you know. Uh, but yeah, they're, uh, they're the best team in the East. Got no problem saying that. They're number four. And number three, we have a team who I think a lot of people might even have higher. I have the Denver Nuggets there. They are 35 and 15, just a half game behind Golden State for uh, first place in the Western Conference. And then they're three games above Oklahoma City, who's just behind them in third place. They've won four straight games and seven of the last ten. They have a plus 5.7 uh, point differential. And a 22-4 and four home record as well. I believe that's identical to the Milwaukee Bucks. Again, elevation, Denver, uh, long flights, all that stuff kind of uh, comes into play with that. Uh, Jokic, MVP possibility. He's playing at an MVP level. Uh, throws out triple doubles like he's Russell Westbrook. Um, and then Jamal Murray. This is his best season he's ever had. Looking like a po he should have been a possible all-star. A lot of people are saying he was snubbed. Um... And just all around, they're getting great play from a lot of different people. The Denver Nuggets are a real force to be reckoned with. I think they have a shot at beating Golden State in a seven-game series. I wouldn't pick them, but I do think they have a shot. All right, my number two team is actually the number three team in the West. I have the Oklahoma City Thunder. 
They have a 32 and 18 record, which is three and a half games behind Golden State and three games behind Denver. I just think that overall they're a better team right now.